While the bat's away, the cat will play. Here's your look at the new DC Collectibles, DC Cover Girls, Joelle Jones, Catwoman statue. From Joelle Jones, the superstar artist who took Catwoman into battle, comes a brand new statue from DC Cover Girls line. Sculpted by Jack Matthews, limited to 5,000 pieces, Selena Kyle lounges on a vault she's ready to crack open with a few flicks of her claws. Inspired by the powerful women of the DC Universe, DC Cover Girls is a long-running line that features dynamic depictions of the most famous superheroines and supervillains in a premium 9 inch statue. Now, you know before we get into doing any bit of reviewing of this statue, we're going to figure out how tall the statue stands. It's the service that I'd like to provide you, the viewers, so that when you guys are picking this one up for yourself, and I really would highly recommend that you do, you'll know exactly how much space you need to allot on your shelf or anywhere you plan on keeping your displays of your statues. So according to the Ultra Measuretron 5000, the statue of Joel Jones Catwoman stands rather impressively at 8.3 inches. It actually doesn't even seem the case. It almost almost appears to be a smaller statue and yet my friends the proof is in the pudding a rather impressive 8.3 inches in height which in centimeters let's go ahead and do that right now it's a little over 21 centimeters if i was to be exact and i always like to be exact you're looking at about 21 you are looking at 21.2 centimeters tall it's a pretty straightforward assembly when you get it immediately out of the box you get yourself with the standard joelle jones display base I say standard because if you've managed to pick up any of the Joel Jones statues, congratulations, actually, you're picking up one of the best statue lines from one of the best artists that DC Collectibles are currently producing, just my own opinion. Joel Jones, though, this trademark stamping of her signature and the banding around the circular display base is the same treatment that you'll see with all of Joel's releases, other than just, of course, the coloring is going to be changing a little bit. Flip the statue around. And uh, this is 21, this just so happens to be 21, I think that's a 3, 2131 out of 5,000 copies. Of course, your number will vary when you pick this statue up for yourself. You can probably also see, too, this display stand is a magnet, probably just for the fact that it's a black stand, really catches all of the fingerprints. So you may want to be dusting, wiping these down frequently, and you're not obviously going to be seeing it from that side anyways. But you can still see it's a pretty bad magnet for fingerprints. A nice little dusting of a cloth probably would be something that you'd want to consider. As for connecting the two pieces, yes, it is only two pieces. Uh, there's two holes, there are two pegs, and you can probably understand where this is going to be going now. Um, you could, in theory, uh, flip the statue around if you want to have Cat One kind of facing a little bit more closer forward, but it really doesn't seem to be uh, a really a logical idea because why wouldn't you want to have the signature featured forward so instead we're going to flip it around i just did that so you guys can see it can really technically go both ways line up the pegs to the provided holes underneath 
and just slide that into place. And then that's all that's required to put the Catwoman on top of, or perch, I should say, the Catwoman on top of the circular display stand. Now, I'm sure there's no surprise as to why I would have picked up this particular statue, being such an incredible fan of Joelle Jones's work. Ironically enough, of all the other various statues, I think this is now the fourth Joelle Jones statue that I've done from DC Collectibles. Ironically enough, though, it was actually Catwoman that caught my attention in the comic pages and really got my interest brewing when it comes to Jones's work. Uh, Joelle Jones's Catwoman really does have such an iconic look to it, and much like all the other pieces that DC Collectibles have released, I think this one really does capture just the true essence of Joelle Jones's work. Now we can look at the bottom and we'll kind of work our way up. I'll do my best not to, of course, block off or, you know, of course, obstruct any bit of viewing of this statue because I really would want to not take anything away from the fantastic job that they've done. Uh, a good, actually, starting point, <clears throat> a placement in which you can put Catwoman. If you're going to put Catwoman on anything, a large vault probably would be the best choice. The vault is actually kind of comprised of what almost looks to be like a bluish, almost pearless metallic blue. It really does shine quite nicely. You can see almost it has a slight glitter look to it. The large giant dial and the lever there to open up the vault door. And you can see also the side brackets there, the hinges that would support the door opening and closing. Now, it's not made of metal, but I can tell you, though, the statue is rather heavy, heavy for its size. As we move our way up, you can see there is Catwoman sitting atop rather playfully on top of, this, of the uh, safe, the vault. We spin this around. I'm just drawing your attention quickly to the fact that they also incorporated the whip, sort of kind of simulating also a cat tail, how a cat will just lounge onto something. My cats certainly do that and like to drape their tails off. They've kind of mimicked that a little bit here with her whip. The whip is made of, uh, it seems to be a, a similar type of plastic, just a little bit thinner. The one thing I am worried about though is while there is fairly sufficient give down here as you are moving the whip of course there is going to be a placement right there that is going to start developing stress marks and bending if you are mo moving the tail too much the whip too much guaranteed that that's probably going to start developing a little bit of a crease line and the last thing you certainly would not want to do is break that off i know i'm drawing a lot of attention to her to also catwoman's behind one thing also I really quite like about this too is the statue has almost an iridescent look to it. In other words, depending on the way the light hits it, sometimes it does look a little bit darker. Um, it does have obviously a much more purple color. I kind of like that they did go purple uh, rather than just a stark black that this costume is normally known for. The violets, as well as that shading of black, really does bring out all those little wrinkles and creases as the outfit does its best to stretch itself around Catwoman's rather robust form. Of course, this outfit also sports uh, almost thigh-high boots, as you can see right there. The buckles are painted in there nicely in silver, but I'm really like drawing my attention. My focal point, the focus of this statue, I think, is really the coloring. The coloring is so incredibly rich. I really do like that a lot. What's rather interesting, though, about the head sculpt, and I think for the purpose of this, I may very well do something I don't normally do too often. And that is, I'll actually bring in the box. I'm going to spin the box around, and I do want to bring your attention to the fact that on the box itself, her goggles come across actually as the pink, the red that we normally would see on these statues. Sometimes when you do get artist proof, for example, the coloring may vary from what we will actually see in comic book stores. Now this... <clears throat> this one actually I did pick up in my local comic book store and I'm actually happy to say that I'm in, I like more so the fact that the coloring on the goggles is a darker color rather than the lighter color. Now that's just my own personal preference but I actually kind of like that it's a darker color. I think it works better with the purple than going with the very bright bright pink that they ended up going with or initially I guess was supposed to be going with on the box. I'm not really sure why they ultimately changed that 
from what it was supposedly looking on the box to what we physically got in hand here. Get a close-up look at Catwoman's face. What a stunning portrait. I like that she's got a little bit of a playful smirk, sort of playing itself to the idea that she's just perching atop of the... It almost seems actually the way that she's perched atop of this the safe, that it seems like she's almost even waiting for Batman to arrive. Kind of the game back and forth that she has with the bats. Like the face, though, is just absolutely gorgeous. I like the bright green eyes that they've given her. Some nice shading also, I must say, around the cheek area, too. The banding of the silver lends itself well to the goggles, you know, around the areas around the goggles, just because it does break that up a little bit from those goggles blending into the rest of the coloring of the statue. Of course, she's got the looplet there at the top where her zipper would start, and as you follow your eye all the way down, there's the silver uh, zipper running all the way down to beyond the point in which the whip wraps itself. I like the way that they've also gripped her hands, again, around that safe. Just kind of, again, looks like she is waiting for somebody, possibly even Batman. Just a real close, close look at that face. What a stunning, stunning portrait. I don't know if you can also even see it, too, but if you tilt it up slightly, her, her mouth, her lips are not fully closed. Instead, you can almost even make out there could be some very well some teeth visible there as her mouth is slightly opened. Something of which you, from normally from an angle, when you look at a statue straight on like this, you're probably not going to see. And that's why I try to do my best to show you guys all those close-up details. Look at, look at those teeth. Those look awesome. I like that also that they, they didn't go light on the panel lining. Specifically, what I'm talking about is around her eyes. The very bold black lining around her eyes actually does help those eyes pop. Um, really, if not for that black, some of the details could potentially get lost, like the, specifically the eyes. But those black, the eyelashes that they've given the, around the areas of the eyelids also really just help those eyes pop. Uh, something of which, again, uh, specifically for Joelle Jones's work, I mean, she always has a lot of life and personality into her, uh, into really her artwork. And DC Collectibles, up to this point, really hasn't hit any misses whatsoever. Uh, all of their uh, releases for the Joel Jones statues, I feel personally, have been successful. Catwoman being no different. Uh, she is a little bit smaller than some of the other Joel Jones statues that we've had a look at on this channel. Uh, guaranteed, I can tell you, though, this that based on what we've seen here with Catwoman, based on what we've seen with some of the previous Joel Jones statues that I've looked at on this channel, I can most definitely tell you this is not going to be the last Joel Jones statue that I'm going to be picking up from the folks over at DC Collectibles. But a feline Fatalis had various different costume changes since her first appearance in Batman number no. 1 of Spring 1940. For the longest time, my favorite Catwoman design was the one from the 90s. You know, that ridiculously tight purple outfit that she wore and the hair coming out from the bottom of her cowl? Yeah, that one right there. That was my longest, for the longest time, that was my favorite Catwoman design. Up to the point that this new costume was changed or introduced. Since its inception many, many years ago, the costume has pretty much stayed the same. Not much has changed to it. Though artists have given their own unique spin and twist to the, the design of the costume, the character pretty much has stayed pretty much relatively the same as what we're seeing right here. My favorite notable artist of recent memory was Joelle Jones. There's something about the way that she draws characters, female characters, that she has a personality and expression that sometimes gets lost when other artists are drawing her. The very fact that DC Collectibles are able to extract that from the comic pages and put that to statue form is quite an impressive sight. Catwoman, again, one of my all-time favorite Joelle Jones artwork, translated very, very well, I must say, very successfully to this statue. There's nothing really at all I would have changed to the statue at all. I even like the fact that she's got that little bit of a smirk just in the corner of her mouth, and it just really embodies the fact that she's being very playful. We don't even know if she's going to be robbing from this vault. Maybe she's just toying around with Batman. She's just sitting there waiting for him to arrive. Uh, it's got a great form to it. Like I said, and a beautiful head sculpt all around. Once again, another great addition to the DC Cover Girls and another great addition to Joel Jones's artwork translated here by DC Collectibles very, very successfully. If you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself, some good news is the Joel Jones Catwoman DC Cover Girls statue. That's a mouthful 
is available now at your local comic book stores. That's where I picked this one up for myself. If you guys want to also go back and have a look at some of my other DC collectible statue reviews, there's a playlist just for that. And, and, and... If you're new to this channel, I went for a dramatic pause. If you are new to this channel and haven't yet had a chance to subscribe, or maybe you're a long-time viewer of this channel, thank you for that, by the way, and you still haven't subscribed to this channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button that's just below this video. And also, turn on your bell notifications so when new videos are coming onto this channel, you'll never miss out. We're also going to have a look at some upcoming statue reviews on this channel. I sort of just gave that away. So stay tuned. If you're into statues, you're hopefully going to be happy with some of the stuff that's going to be coming up in future videos. So stay tuned for that. Let me know what you guys think down below of the DC Covergirls Joelle Jones Catwoman statue. And thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you guys next time.